Welcome back, everyone, to Lobster Labs 2 Recap. This is round two, or what would have been round two. And we are watching Blow Against Dave on Cobalt Dream. Again, Rover versus Tanks, just like last time on Titan Duel. And so far, it looks like Dave is being a lot more aggressive than Steel Blue was. Blow up. Pretty standard start here, just, yeah. One of each. Mason, Dart, Scorcher. Get that going. Get the scouting going, get slowing going if you can with Dart. Dave, on the other hand, with the early Kodachi, will be able to poke around a bit. Might be able to do some damage. Might be able to even take out a Metal Extractor. Actually, considering how far afield this Mason is, I don't expect that to be found, but if it is, that'll be death for Blowa, but I don't think it will be. I think Blowa will be fine. So... Dave. Dave, what do you got here? Blow's commander looks to be intercepting Dave's Kodachi. Well, maybe not. Doesn't quite see it. Ah, there we go. There it sees it. And down goes the metal extractor. Blow's commander looking to try to get rid of that, but now it's been more or less spotted. Dave knows what's up. Dave knows what Blow is up to. Has also seen the dart. So it's not going to be too much of a surprise. So far as going for Maskinachi, where Day where Blowit is going for Mask Scorcher. And I'm still surprised we don't see people go for Dart Scorcher against tanks. At least a couple darts just peppered in there. I mean I, I guess I get it, yes, Kodachis are hard they can deal with the darts pretty quickly, but if they're targeting the scorchers and you throw the darts and slow them down. The scorchers get so much more survivability. For like an extra forty metal or eighty metal thrown into the army. It really is worth it, but you don't see a lot of players do it, which I find curious. But that is how Bloa is playing this out. So with that, Bloa should be pretty well equipped here to at least push off the Kodachi. Not necessarily kill it, but you know, stop it from being too much of a contain, though for now, Dave, I mean, they kind of don't care. They're just throwing things out there, building as many metal extractors as they can as quickly as possible. Double welder, too. 15 build power thrown out there. Purely on metal extractors. Like Dave is super confident they can hold off anything with basically their commander and one or two Kodachis. Which, admittedly, they are building their metal extractor economy quite quickly. So they're probably not wrong. And to be fair, welders do have lasers. They can defend themselves. Two or three Scorchers are not going to kill them. I think four more will, but yeah, that's not quite enough. It's not Blow is not enough of a threat right now. So Dave is playing that pretty smart. Unfortunately, Dave is running out of energy. They will need to be actually setting up some kind of energy economy. The wind generators are also running at max power, so that is not, not a matter of wait for the wind to pick up. This is like, build more solars, honestly. And I don't think Dave is quite aware of this stuff. Also, the dart going around does not see anything to really pick at. There is this one metal extractor where the dart will be picking at. Slows things down a little bit. But Dave, right now, again, their biggest weakness is a lack of energy. Killing the Metal Extractors is nice, but it's not going to be doing a whole lot of damage, all things considered. Dave, again, is much more in the hole when it comes to energy, and they will soon be excessing metal, so... I mean, the sentiment is good. Not a bad idea to try to take out Metal Extractors, it's just in this exact moment, Dave is... Kind of got a buffer. Though so does Bloa. In fact, Bloa is even worse position when it comes to their power. And again, has no apparent plans to fix that. Not sure they're quite aware how low they are. Oh, never mind. There is some plans there. Storage to hold the line just for the time being, and then set up more silical plants. I mean, that's a way to go with it. Uh, with a few more solar collectors, they should be fine. Yeah, Caretaker going up to help burn out what what metal they have, and then, of course, power for the rest of it. Fortunately, Dave does not have a Caretaker or anything at their base. They do have a Welder coming in, which I have expect will be used to just... Oh, uh, maybe not. I'm trying to think, it doesn't look like it's actually set up to auto-assist, so no, it may not necessarily be assisting the factory. And... Ripper doesn't manage to get through Welder. I mean, granted, those alongside Lotus, but that's good to know. 
If you're ever wondering, can I kill a welder with a ripper? The answer is sometimes, but not always. You gotta be careful about that. Again, rippers don't deal damage that quickly. Their fire rate's low. Their actual damage is high, but their fire rate's so low, it just doesn't make up for it. Speaking of, though, the other side of that coin is the Kodachi. It's high fire rate and... Well, higher fire rate, fast speed, and still decent damage. Getting into that mason right before it could find its way to safety. So Bloa, unfortunately, is a bit behind when it comes to overall metal, but actually isn't doing too badly when it comes to production. For now, actually, Dave is... In the for folks entirely on defenses and getting the energy back up, but that is it. That's all they really have. So Bloa does have a window. Like, right now, they are starting to build up more. And that Kodachi not managing to kill the Lotus in time, so... Ultimately, Bloa also managing to defend. So right now is the best time to push forward. I do kind of wish they'd set up a bit more expanding, or at least rebuilding some of these metal extractors. Because that is the one thing that's going to bite them. Dave does have an economic advantage now. They are pretty close to getting a production advantage. So Dave's got to be careful. But they, sorry, Bloa's got to be careful because Dave will very quickly surpass them if Bloa doesn't start building up. And Bloa is getting some expansions going. So it's not too dire a situation yet. Also, building some forward, forward stinger right next to the opposing commander is an interesting choice. I mean, this is clearly the line, like, you know, very much an easy line to pull units through. The way that Dave has the defenses set up. But that's not what Dave cares about. They're not really worried about having to go through any kind of lines. It's all their territory, so... Unlike, say, a line going through the center, this is not really a relevant part of this whole match. Ogre coming in, however, is having a little bit of a hard time getting through all these... More the Rippers, actually. More so the Rippers and the Fencers, but it all kind of works out. And that is a dead Ogre for, I think, cost. I mean, 500 for... Yeah, 500 for 500. Actually, no, 500 for 400. So, well done. Bit of efficiency on Bloa's part. While well, we put in those attrition stacks back in their favor. Same time over to the north... Scorcher looks to be trying to get rid of a welder. It's got to play this carefully. Fortunately, does not spot the welder moving around. I think that's going to be it for the Scorcher. Nope, the welder does go down. My bad. And that should be a nice little couple kills on the metal extractors for blow up north. Dave trying to hold the line over to the south, trying to push in once again. While at the same time, Dave's commander heavily threatened over to the north. Not quite managing to get a whole lot of damage done while the Badgers are... Well, I mean, they're doing what the name suggests. They're badgering. The Ogre, however, is just stomping right on through. Nothing is stopping it. All the units that should have stopped it were a little bit out of position. Again, the focus is clearly getting rid of Dave's commander, which I honestly don't agree with. Dave's commander, I guess, this forward, and yeah, it is creating this big forward, fire, forward operating base, but that's not on the path. Like, the main path here is along this line. Going along the outside, that's not what is happening. Bloa doesn't have to worry about that. So unfortunately, they are burning a lot of resources to try to clear that out. And I mean, yes, if they manage to do it, that will be an okay position to be in. But at the same time, again, the center line is fully under Dave's control. And Bloa would have a much easier time stopping it if they just went for it. Still, though, Dave's commander has been at least pushed back. Not for nothing, but... Again, there's... I'm not sure how much... Like, Bloa does know, at least with radar, to some degree, what is being built. I mean, they have, they have some idea about what they can get rid of. They just aren't going for it. So it doesn't look like Dave is really all that threatened. And again, at the same time, this ogre, or these ogres coming through the center, are providing an increasing amount of pressure. Okay, some ravagers, mass ravagers deal with it. I don't totally agree with this. Honestly, I don't agree at all with just building this way. I... Like, repeat build. It's easier to get a mixed army with repeat build. But both players going for a very mono spam force, so... Don't re really agree with either of those approaches, but apparently that is what they're going for. So I guess that's what they're going to be doing. So it goes. At any rate, the... The Ogres coming in here against the Ravagers... I mean, Ravager Ripper I could see taking care of the Ogres, but pure Ravager, I don't think it's going to deal with it for cost. 
I think if you kite it well enough, or used to be if you kite it well enough, but that was before the ogres got their missile buff, and now it's not really the case anymore. Raptors don't really out damage for cost ogres. Granted, they do have all the badgers coming in, softening them up, so this should be fine. Same time, though, Ravager coming around the side, or Ripper coming around the side, not able to do much before getting killed off by Blitzes. Ravager's closing in. This is kind of what I was talking about. The Ogre's able to very easily outdamage them. The Ravagers exist as a tank. Ravager Ripper is what you want, but unfortunately, again, blow up mono spamming Ravagers because they're not going repeat build. Just build a bunch of stuff and then switch what you're building and build it into more stuff. It's like, no, that doesn't work. I mean, Dave's build approach. Ah, they are doing exactly what I was suggesting. Perfect. Dave is, in fact, doing the thing. So yeah, Dave's gonna have a nice mixed army. Very shortly. Blitz, Kodachi, Ogre. I oh, they're going in for a minute towards later on. And that's a pretty solid mix of forces. Especially when you consider they are up against either Mono Scorcher or Mono Ravager. Yeah, I'd say Bloa, honestly, they had a position to work with, but... Unfortunately, due to having not really having enough of a mixed composition to deal with both the ogres and the blitzes coming around the side, or just deal with the ogres because ogres really aren't dealt with easily by any one unit type by rovers. Again, Ravager Ripper is kind of your best bet if you spread them out. It's a it gets a tricky fight. Ogres are tough to fight with as rovers. It's one of the hardest parts of the, ma of the matchup, and that's the thing that wasn't really dealt with. However, the ravagers are coming in just to go in and actually assault. No, more or less their actual function, though. Mostly as a suicide mission, blow it going hard for the commander. I don't know what they've been playing BAR a bunch or what. Because Zero K is not a game where the game ends when the commander dies. Now, that is just not how the game works. And I think that's what Blow is trying to do. I mean, yes, the commander dying is bad, but it's not enough. And in the attempt to kill the commander, Blow lost their entire base, their factory, and the game. So, Dave ultimately gained another point here. At this point, Dave, I believe, had two points in the tournament. And showing the bracket would be spoilers, but, yeah. Anyhow, so with that, we're going to be looking... The last round, the last match, will be back to Downtown and Randy, the remaining two players. There were six players in the tournament, and we have seen four of them. So, back to Downtown and Randy, the remaining two, will be up against each other in round three. Oh no, actually, Dave, this is his first point. They they had they were one and one at this stage of the tournament. Alright, so the next match is going to be the representative for round three, which will again be Randy versus Bactiv Dantes. So stay tuned. It'll be up in just a couple minutes.